Hi everyone, Thomas Vandiver here with The Neighborhood Harvest. Today we're in one of our greenhouses and it's the one where we do most of our cucumber production. I'm going to take you on a little tour, show you how we grow our cucumbers, and I think you're going to be surprised. It's a lot different than any cucumber you might have grown in your garden that you might have seen someone else grow in their garden. So first thing that you'll notice is there's a lot of string in here. That's because we want to grow our plants upward. Um, a lot of gardeners will use maybe a, a side fence to grow it up or they'll just let their cucumbers grow on the ground. And that's fine, they'll grow, they'll grow okay that way. But for us, we wanna try and get maximum production. It costs a lot of money to heat these greenhouses and we gotta make them work. So we go up. It also has the benefit of creating more surface area for the plant so that we can get more sunlight. Especially this time of year in the winter, sunlight's one of our limiting factors, right? And plants need sunlight to grow. So by growing the plant upward, the sun is able to penetrate through the entire canopy, you get a lot more growth really important in your cucumber house that you arrange your rows running north to south for that reason. And so these rows are on a perfect north-south axis so that when the sun rises on this side of the greenhouse, it comes up, hits its peak, and then it goes this way. And so just like a vineyard, each side of our row is getting an equal amount of sun so that you don't have one side out competing the other. So that's, that's the biggest reason that we grow up. It's the sunlight, but it also makes it easier to manage. If you come down low, you'll see that all of these plants are planted in slabs, okay? So this is the same rock wool that we grow our lettuce in, but rather than it being the little one-by-one one cubes that a single lettuce plant sits in, instead, it's a three-foot-long um, slab. And what you'll see is that there's three planting sites, one, two, three on each slab. Each site has got two crops, and so you'll see each one is on its own wire. It goes up. If you, and maybe we can get a shot so that they can see down it, what you'll see right down the row here is that the strings go out at a little bit of an angle. And again, that's to create space in the middle for more sunlight penetration, more airflow. These guys here are small. You can see they're only about a foot tall. But as you go back behind me, you'll see ones that are about three foot tall, four, five, six. They get all the way up to eight feet tall. When they come up this line, there's little red clips. You might zoom in here so you can see them. These little clips here are helping keep the plant trained without pinching it. Old school is you used to take the, the, the string and just wrap the plant around it. So like, for example, we just take this right here and wrap it. Problem is, is that as the plant gets heavier and heavier, it's actually cutting into it and you could end up, you know, cutting the plant or just reducing the amount of water and nutrients that can be brought to the top of the plant. So these clips are great. They're cheap, they're biodegradable, and we use them to keep the plant online. As it comes up, you're gonna let the fruit start to produce. So right here you'll see we've got some little yellow flowers and as we go through anywhere that you see a flower we could grow a fruit. Now when the plants are this small we tend to pluck the fruit off. The reason being is that you want to give the plant the ability to divert its energy towards root production at the start, right? Fruit takes a lot of energy off of the plant to produce and so if it's focusing on producing fruit it's going to balance all of its available resources between fruit and root production. When you cut the fruit off, it's gonna drive it all to the roots. That gives you a strong, solid base so that when the plants get big, like the ones we got over here, you can get really solid production on it. This is a plant where you can see just in this, you know, one foot of the vine, I can count what we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. You got 13 cucumbers that have come right from this area. And the reason that the plant can support that type of production is it's got a really strong root system. That's important. Now, where are the roots getting their water and nutrient from? They're obviously getting it from the slabs, but it's on a different sort of timer than our lettuce. The lettuce is on an NFT uh, system. That means nutrient film technique. So there's a small amount of water that's constantly running, creates a film that the roots are able to grow out into and suck up that water, suck up those nutrients. Here instead, it's actually on like a boom bust sort of timer system. So eight times a day, the slabs are flooded. As they flood, they're soaking the slab up, right? And that's important. But more importantly, they're pushing out the old fertilizer. Cucumbers, like tomatoes, are really heavy feeders, right? They're feeding on a lot of fertilizer. Well, the way plants metabolize is that they're gonna leave behind a salt, right? And if you have a buildup of that salt, it's going to become toxic to the plant. So we over irrigate to push that out. Now that salt will break down over time, so it's not unhealthy, but it's not a good thing to have building up right at the root zone. It's another little difference between hydroponic growing and dirt growing. Because you're growing so much in such a small space, you have to be careful about allowing those toxic salts to build up. 
as we come down the line, you'll see that we got big cucumbers, little cucumbers, all manner. This plant here, these are almost ready to pick. Now we've already picked this morning, so all the ones that we wanted have come up. This, if we have a nice warm day today, we'll be ready tomorrow to harvest. When you've got heat and CO2 and sunlight, these cucumbers can put on a lot of weight. There's times that we can pull 100 pounds a day out of this place, as long as you know our, our growth is optimized. Now this time of year, we are using our grow lights. You can see them, they're right above me. One or two of them is on, and that's just to keep the plants used to that artificial light. Um, they will all come on at five o'clock tonight, and they'll run from five to 9 p.m. Then they'll come on again tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. and run until 9 a.m. The reason we do that is that we want to establish summertime sunlight patterns for the plant. And so you have an artificial sunrise, but it's still a sunrise to the plant. That's at 6 a.m. And then you have an artificial sunset at 9 p.m. That keeps the plants at a hormonal level in prime production. And I know it sounds silly, but you gotta sometimes manipulate the plant's hormones. Rather than using chemicals, we're just using light to do it naturally. So they're off right now because we got a nice sunny day. We are, however, using a little bit of heat in here. That, we have a burner at the front of the greenhouse. It's an open-faced burner, right? It's a really high efficiency unit and it's, it's running on propane, but what it's putting into the air is a little bit of moisture, but mainly CO2. The CO2 is important because it's cold outside, so we're not running any of the fans in here. So these plants needing CO2 to perform photosynthesis could run out of it if we're not adding that artificial CO2 into it. Think about it as a group of humans that are trapped in a box at the bottom of the ocean. They're gonna run out of oxygen eventually. Now, unlike the humans, which would die in that box at the bottom of the ocean, our plants will just stop growing. They're not gonna die, but without that CO2 that they need to breathe, they will stop photosynthesis. So we're giving them light and we're giving them CO2. The heat pretty much takes care of itself. Even on a cloudy day, this greenhouse is so efficient that we're able to get most of the heat that we need from the sunshine. So, final takeaway here is that cucumbers, a delicious crop, a summertime treat, can be available to you all year round. We're growing them here in this artificial summer environment, and we hope that you'll consider adding them to your next order. If you've never tried the neighborhood harvest before, maybe this will convince you to give it a shot. You can get summertime level produce in the middle of winter. I hope you stick that New Year's resolution. Thanks everyone.